Hello everybody, I'm Jeff Lowry and welcome to the home of the Arizona Diamondbacks, Chase Field, and this edition of Inside Maricopa Sports. <music> Summer means school is out, but there's still plenty to cover in the Maricopa Junior College Sports. And in a moment, we're going to hear from MCTV reporters Mike Caratanudo and Candace Hurdle on what's going on. And without any further ado, let's send it over to Candace Hurdle. Many teams feature dual sport athletes who play two sports simply for the love of the game. I caught up with two Maricopa athletes to find out what it's like to play more than one sport. At a shotgun with time. You can see these athletes the on the zone. gridiron. And a diving catch for a touchdown, Demetrius Wilson. The hardwood. Locke, she'll take a long three with four on the shot clock. And Janae Locke with her seventh point of the night. And the soccer field. You can also see each of these athletes on the track. They are dual sport athletes, playing at least two sports during one school year. Janae Locke is a point guard for Mesa women's basketball and also runs the 200 in track. Demetrius Wilson is a wide receiver for Glendale football and runs the hurdles and sprints in track. Maya Rugg is a midfielder for Mesa soccer and does the triple jump and sprints for track and field. Each sport brings a different element that these athletes have to adjust to every season. In soccer, I actually have something to run for, like to get to instead of track, I just run to the finish line. Basketball is really team orientated, where track is kind of individualized. Running track helps the on-field performance in their other sports. It just gets your feet faster, you know, get out your breaks and cuts, and, you know, on the football field, and also in track. Come on, Maya! Track helps me with my speed for like the short distances. Helps me get to the ball faster. A disadvantage of playing two sports is not having any time off. I'm always going. I never get to stop. I think it's a mental thing for me. Janae only had one day off between the end of her basketball season and the beginning of the track season. The short break made adjusting between sports difficult. It was really hard to transition from basketball in shape to track in shape. These athletes feel there is much to gain from playing two sports, despite the disadvantages. Things like determination, um, competitiveness, um, fighting through problems and obstacles. Most athletes say that the love of sports drives them to compete and play as many sports as possible. You know, I just love the sports, you know, I'm a sports guy. I do track mainly for the love of the sport. Reporting for Inside Maricopa Sports, I'm Candace Hurdle. Thanks, Candace. More to come on Inside Maricopa Sports. We've got a story about a former Maricopa baseball player now playing in the major leagues, plus a golf tip from Talking Stick Golf Course. Stay with us. In today's world, layoffs are a fact of life. Stressful? Yes. End of the world? <laughs> no. But with a wife and two kids, I need new skills now. Discover yourself at the Maricopa Community Colleges, maricopa.edu. Right now I'm being joined by Mike Caratanudo. And Mike, you talk about the junior college players here in Arizona. It's not uncommon to find these guys going all the way to the bigs. And you have a story about one of the top players in the National League. Absolutely, Jeff. And with the Major League Draft that just happened, quite a few more players from the conference got drafted again, looking to keep the continued success. But in this edition of Where Are They Now, we're going to catch up with Los Angeles Dodger Andre Ethier, who started his collegiate career at Chandler Gilbert Community College. Love Andre. Woo! That's a popular opinion among Dodger fans about all-star right fielder Andre Ethier. Ethier was a star baseball player here in Phoenix. His play earned him an offer to play at baseball powerhouse Arizona State. But when the coaching staff told him he just wasn't quite ready to play at that level yet, Ethier had a decision to make, stay at ASU in redshirt or go play at the junior college level. You know, I just wanted to play at the time, and um, I knew the head coach there at Chandler Gilbert um, um, from previous stuff, and um, you know, that was my first choice was uh, stay out in Chandler and uh, um, you know, try my hand there for a first-year program with, uh, with the Coyotes out there. Ethier's decision to come play at Chandler Gilbert turned out great. He worked hard and improved his game during the 2001 season and was named Team MVP. Ethier carried that momentum back to ASU where he was a two-time first-team All-Pac-10 outfielder. And his first Major League game for the Dodgers came in a familiar place. It was here at home uh, against the Diamondbacks that I made my Major League debut and um, 
you know, something where I had all those, you know, friends, family, coaches in the stands watching me, and it was something where it was a great opportunity to share that, uh, you know, rare moment, uh, you know, that first big league game. Dodger fans use Ethier's path of getting to the major leagues as a positive message for their children. It gives kids hope that when they start, wherever they start in life, whether it be a little league like my son, or they, they started to carry that on to junior college and then go on to a big school, is great. If you put your mind to it, anything can happen. And he's done a great job. He's a great role model for both my girls, so he's great. Ethier's message to the players in the ACCAC reflects the attitude he took to the field every day when he played here. Just keep playing, keep playing hard, and uh, you know you never know who's watching. You never know the opportunity you're gonna get. Those opportunities uh, you know, come don't come that often, but uh, use them to their max and um, enjoy it. Enjoy the time and enjoy the people around you. Mike Caratanudo reporting for Inside Maricopa Sports. The IMS Golf Tip, brought to you by Talking Stick Golf Club, Troon Golf in Scottsdale. Hi. I'm Jack Lobiondo, teaching professional here at Togusty Golf Club. I just got showing you, finished showing you how to hit a fairway bunker shot from 120 yards. Now I'm going to show you how to hit a fairway shot from 120 yards. We used one more club in that fairway bunker. We're going to do the same thing in the fairway. So we're going to use our full swing grip, left hand on, thumb right of center, no gap in between the thumb and forefinger. Right hand on, the lifeline right here is going to cover my thumb. I'm going to form a trigger finger and no gap as well. Both V should be pointing on my right shoulder. The only change we're going to make is I'm going to grip down about an inch on this club to make the ball go about 10 yards shorter. So I've got my full swing grip on. Ball position is about two inches off my left heel. And just make a normal full swing. In the fairway bunker, we had the ball a little further back in our stance. Ball position is going to be about two inches off my left heel. In the fairway bunker that we just did, it was a little further back, about three to four inches. But all fairway shots, the ball's two inches off my left heel. Got my grip on, ball position's good. Let's make a full swing. So I got my full swing grip. I grip down about an inch. Ball position's two inches off my left heel. And I'm just gonna make a normal swing. The IMS Golf Tip has been brought to you by Talking Stick Golf Club, Troon Golf in Scottsdale. I need a passport to go to Tijuana. Can Social Security... Relax, Tony. Call 1-800-FED-INFO. Wherever you are, the answers to all your government questions are never far away. Call 1-800-FED-INFO. You know, going from a junior college to a big school is a huge transition for Maricopa athletes. There's many challenges on the way. We're going to take a look right now at those athletes trying to take their game to the next level. For many players that come through Maricopa Community Colleges, football is more than just a sport. It's a way of life. And for some, it's a chance to showcase their abilities to get to the next level. But those looking to make it to the top will have to pay the price of sweat and tears. We're running and lifting three days a week. We come out here and do gassers or hundreds or, you know, those fun things in the hundred and whatever degree heat. And that's after we lift, of course. Cy Moffmer plays defensive tackle for the Glendale Community College Gauchos and has been contacted by big name schools such as Michigan and Oregon. However, after tearing his ACL in high school, Cy came to GCC to prove that he belonged at the next level. His story is not so different from another GCC Gaucho. Former situation myself, uh, coming out of high school as a non-recruited athlete, it wasn't due to academics, I just physically wasn't prepared to go on to a, a higher level of, of football. But going into my sophomore year, I had the goal of going on and getting an education and getting it paid for and playing college football, preferably at the Division I level. Coach Bell says that the key to playing in college all starts with a player's work ethic and integrity, something that he stresses day in, day out. The last thing one of these universities wants to do is bring in a, a character issue type kid that could uh, leave a bad, you know, bad mark on their program. Maricopa Community College football programs compete in the Western States Football League which is considered to be one of the toughest junior college leagues in the country. I think that, you know, with the Maricopa schools here and creating an, an opportunity for some of these kids who do not get recruited out of Arizona, which is an under-recruited state, um, is very beneficial to a lot of these guys. I've got a great opportunity playing here. Just being at Scottsdale, a place like this, when you have great coaches and stuff like that, it just, you know, it helps you, you know, be determined. McGee is a former player at Scottsdale Community College. He now plays wide receiver at Arizona State University and knows what the recruiting process is like. It's extremely stressful, but you gotta kinda 
let it go and just try to do what you have to do on the football field and worry about the recruiting as it comes. One of the most difficult tasks for any coach is to get their kids to leave all the hype in the locker room once the season starts. That's a challenge for us as coaches, you know, because I understand the stressful part of it and you just got to tell them just uh, be persistent and understand what your role is and, and do your job. If you're a good person, good player, and a good student, somebody's going to recruit you. If you worry about the recruiting while you're playing, you stress out and you mess up and then it gets to your head. But for Cy, it's all about living in the present and not worrying about what's going to happen down the line. I like to live in the moment to do the best you can right now because you can't control what's going to happen. For Inside Maricopa Sports, I'm Nick Spordone. For this edition of Coach's Corner, I'm Jeff Lowry, and joining me now is the head coach of the men's program, the basketball program over at South Mountain Community College, and the associate athletic director here at Grand Canyon University, Dan Nichols. Welcome to Coach's Corner. Thanks for having me on. Well, certainly uh, the 2012 season was a lot of fun, very exciting for the Cougars at South Mountain. And uh, boy, just talk about you know the success that you guys had over the last two seasons. Well, we had a shot to win it all this year. I thought we went on a roll about midway through, really got it going, hit our stride. Played really good in the region playoffs. Thought the three-week layoff got us a little stale. I'd probably manage that a little bit different going into the uh, national tournament. So I thought we had a chance to win it there. I thought we were actually the, probably the second best team, maybe pull an upset and get the whole thing. Just really? didn't happen. And then last year, you win the region, and you have one of the most electrifying players I think I've seen in the seven or eight years I've been covering Craig, junior college basketball in Mike Craig. Craig. Well, it's, it's been thought that Mike Craig might be the best player to ever play in the league by some people. I think he has a, a true NBA shot. I mean, the guy's kind of got an old school game, has eyes in the back of his head, and it was, it was easy to coach him, but I also thought he could make every single play. I think, you know, if Mike gets more directed practice, practices like a pro, presents himself, mm -hmm. and these next two years could be key, and he has an outside shot at a big contract. Talk about your program and, and you know, you've got all these young people out there. They want to uh, advance to a, a college program. Not everybody can play <laughs> Division One or Division Two, but why would they want to go to uh, South Mountain? Well, for that opportunity. You know, we preach opportunity. I got a great coaching staff. I use a lot of volunteers because, as you know, I'm there part time, and uh, yeah, we we assign guys different duties. We have Coach Gil Lopez, who uh, was the head coach down in Mexico City, handles our big men. Corey Wallace. I have my old coach. Coach Cannon that I played for, a couple former players working video. So we really spread out the res responsibilities. That's how we can compete with the bigger programs. What about the relationship between Grand Canyon University, where you're the associate athletic director here, and, and the Maricopa Colleges? Well, the executive team, Dan Backus, Stan Meyer, uh, you know, Brian Mueller have really allowed me to coach. I think they look at it as outreach. They know I'm needed down there. So they allow me the opportunity to go back and coach. And that's just fantastic. I think the two things go together. You know, I'm an athletic director here dealing with that all day. I'm out there coaching. So these things really go together. I can spread the word about Canyon and do great things at South Mountain. As you know, we work with a community college uh, on, with transfer students. So this is a great opportunity. It's a good time for me to get with students and talk about Grand Canyon also. Fantastic. Talk about coaching style for a moment. And, and obviously, when you're at the junior college level, I think that's got to be the toughest uh, level to, to coach because of the turnover each year. Do you, do you have to be more yeah. versatile in, in your coaching style, coaching at the junior college level? Well, I preach physicality. If you play against my teams, I think if I was in the locker room and never showed up, you pretty much know who you were playing against. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're going to be rough and tumble and really play the game hard. However, you know, my system allows for variance. If, if it's best to push the ball up the floor and get 110 points with the players that I have, that's what I'm going to do. But I've also had teams, you know, that pounded the ball inside and did a lot of post-up things. I'm comfortable in a lot of styles. You know, I'm pretty well versed knowledgeable about the game. Yeah, I, I really try to keep learning and, you know, keep moving on in that direction. Well, Dan, thanks for being with us on Coach's Corner, and thank you for joining us from Grand Canyon University. Well, that's going to do it for this edition of Inside Maricopa Sports. For dates and times of our show, go to our website at maricopa.edu slash mctv, and check us out on Facebook and on YouTube.
So for Candace Hurdle and Mike Caratanudo from the home of the Arizona Diamondbacks, Chase Field in downtown Phoenix, Jeff Lowry saying so long, everybody.